Virginia for tonight's event. I am Jeremiah Corbin alongside, as always, is the wonderful Connor Brent. Now, Connor, we are just less than a week out from New World War, where the face of CBE was completely changed. We have a new champion. And let's not forget about the circumstances that put him there, but we're going to have to get to that later, as right now it looks like our former champion has something he'd like to say. Let's go to it now. Ladies and gentlemen, you can probably see that I'm missing something. That's because last Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, my CWE championship was stolen from me by Sean Peterson. Now, I didn't come out here to talk about how much Sean Peterson doesn't deserve to be CWE champion. I didn't come out here tonight to talk about how much vengeance I'm looking to get on Sean Peterson. I didn't come out for any of that. I came out here with one purpose tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and that is to tell you that your suspicions were in fact true. At New World War during my match, right as I was about to hit comfortably numb, when the lights went out, I was in fact attacked by two individuals. Now, unfortunately, I don't mean to get your hopes up. They were wearing masks, and I got no indication of who they were or what they might possibly look like. So for the time being, ladies and gentlemen, my attackers are going to remain anonymous, and I'm okay with that because, quite frankly, if it's my opinion, I know I think you did it. And I'm going to go find them right now. Well, Sid Floyd making a claim that he knows who, at least who it was that attacked him, or perhaps who it might have been who sent them. And wait a minute, it looks like he's coming back here. One more thing, ladies and gentlemen. Before I leave, I've got one more thing to say. Sean Peterson, whether or not you're behind this doesn't even matter to me right now. Because whether or not it's you, once I deal with these two guys, I'm coming for you. Well, big words from uh, Sid Floyd, ladies and gentlemen, as he has announced that whether or not it was Sean Peterson who was behind the attacks at New World War, which in all likelihood I think it was, he's going to come after Sean Peterson sooner or later. Uh, most certainly, but uh, you would recall, uh, Let's roll in contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 213 pounds, Garrett Hall. Well, we'll have to get to whatever that main event fiasco that we saw on Sunday was in a little while, because right now, we have our first match of the evening, and Connor, we're going to kick things off with Garrett Hawk. Garrett Hawk, unfortunately, you were in a match with him on Sunday. Neither of you were able to claim the hardcore title. It was, in fact, Garrett Hawk's bitter rival, Eric Matthews, who was able to defeat three other opponents, including Gavarian, uh, to win the hardcore title for the first time in his career. So Garrett Hawk tonight, kind of fighting with a bit of a chip on his shoulder, perhaps, after not being able to pull out a big victory when it counted. But nonetheless, if there's ever a man on a chip with a chip on his shoulder, it's this one right here. Introducing his opponent from Baltimore, Maryland, weighing in at 153 pounds, Gordon Slash. And ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Slash, one of the hardcore icons of CWE, makes his way to the ring now. He has got a lot to prove. He came back surprising the CWE universe a few weeks ago and wasn't able to claim a world title shot. But tonight, the road back to the top begins with Garrett Hawk. And Carter, this victory has got to mean a lot for both competitors. Well, you're right about that, I guess, if you want to put it that way. But nonetheless, here we go. Garrett Hawk versus Gordon Slash. As Hawk ties up. Oh, right to the elbow with drop down on the knee from Garrett Hawk. And look at the springboard drop kick. Incredible athleticism by Garrett Hawk. We got a quick cover attempt. One and a kick out at one. Now, Connor, we're dealing with two incredibly athletic superstars here with Garrett Hawk. 
And Gordon Slash, tell me, what is the key to win for these two superstars? Um, well, being in the ring with, uh, before with uh, Pac, I definitely know the explosive this he has and the athleticism. Uh, they're two of his main strengths. As for uh, Gordon Slash, I can sadly say that I don't have uh, many uh, memories of actually seeing him play. I think I've seen him play one time. Watch out! Oh. Well, he's falling right in front of us right now. But, uh, Honestly, I can't, I can't say for sure this one is Gordon Slash. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, Gordon Slash was a little bit before your time, Connor, so I guess I'll fill in that void. Gordon Slash is a former multiple-time hardcore champion and multiple-time tag team champion with the now-retired Killborn. Uh, was a very dominant superstar until he suffered an orbital bone fracture uh, at a pay-per-view in 2011, which sidelined him for almost a year and a half. But look out here! What an innovative maneuver there by Garrett Hawk! You don't normally see moves like that, and we got a kick out there. And a quick pinfall attempt as Gordon Slash is definitely on the downside of Garrett Hawk's onslaught. No, I think that one might have busted him open. Indeed, there's blood coming out of Gordon Slash's forehead now, Connor. What does that mean for him? Uh, uh, Garrett Hawk's going to go into that um, almost like a boxing mentality and just keep on attacking that wound. Eventually, either Gordon Slash is going to be able to play efficiently, and uh, the ref might just call it. Well, that would definitely be in the advantage of Hawk with a nice German suplex and a bridge pin. One, two, could that? No, he kicks out at two. Nice resilience by Gordon Slash, who's definitely been on the downside of things so far in this match. Now, as Garrett Hawk dragging him back to the center of the ring, avoiding those ropes, possibly maybe thinking submission here. No, he lets him get up, and now, ladies and gentlemen, as this match progresses, we see Garrett Hawk continuing the onslaught. Against Gordon Slash. He's going up to the top rope. High risk maneuver coming in and he nails it hard with a big elbow to the chest. That will take the win right out of you as Garrett Hawk might be signaling the end here. Look at Garrett Hawk stalking up Gordon Slash. Right to the gut. Shot to the head. And a backflip DDT. That's incredible ability there by Gordon Sl or Garrett Hawk too. And he got him. So Garrett Hawk, that's a huge victory against an opponent that definitely has a reputation. And Garrett Hawk is going to have to be able to celebrate this one. He gets to go to the locker room with his head held high. Oh, wait a minute. There's trouble, but there's Eric Matthews, the new hardcore champion. These two guys have been going at one, each other, one another for a couple of weeks now, and it looks like things might be starting to boil over again. Gordon Slash trying to hold him back now. Security's out here trying to separate these two. Oh, the Gordon's or Garrett Hawk breaks free. And now Eric Matthews, what's going to happen? And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Seated in the action from Wheeling, West Virginia, carries on, and we are about to see Connor, one of your greatest foes. One of the most bitter enemies that anyone in this business could ever have, and quite frankly, one of the strangest people, if he is a person, I have ever seen. And I beat him. You did, in fact, Connor, and I, I don't, you know, I don't want to make light of that. It was actually quite an intelligent victory. As they say, I ain't nobody got time for that, ladies and gentlemen. Nonetheless, Connor Brandt, for those of you who missed. Last oh, week's show was to schedule two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't really matter when it was. From the pits of hell, weighing an extra 272 pounds, Syndra! But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, the event that I'm currently in the ring, fighting out of Tokyo, Japan, weighing in at 186 pounds, Guvarian! As I was saying before, I was really interrupted by the announcer. He sounds an awful lot like me, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, Connor Brandt was actually called out Cinderac for a one-on-one -on -one match, and I thought you were crazy, but nonetheless, you surprised me. Kavarian came into the ring to help you out by throwing a chair in the ring, and while the ref was distracted with him, you wisely smacked the chair up the ground, threw it in Cinderac's hands, and played possum long enough to earn yourself a disqualification win and a spot in the first break game. Now, that is exactly why we're going to see this match here tonight, as Cinderac is supposed to take on Kavarian. Maybe a bit of karma, not only from last week, but from the debut of Cinderac when he took out Kavarian. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a no disqualifications, anything goes match as the bell rings. And oh, right off the bat, a huge spear. Taking out Gavarian is Sindrak. 
has started the match off with authority. And now the strike's over. Gavorian, no, oh, Sindrak got out of the way. And Sindrak will now send Gavorian off the ropes, goes off himself. Oh, but he misses that clothesline. Watch out for that clothesline. Worthy opponent. I mean, he fought me. He wasn't really much of a fight as much as I need to admit it, but uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how he'll be able to fare against somebody like that tomorrow. You're right. we got to be careful now. They're outside near us here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You're, you make a good point, Connor. Let's let's be real. Uh, Sindrak's first match was against Eric Matthews, but that was at a point in time where Eric Matthews wasn't quite in his own head. And then a week after that, or at least two weeks, and, oh, and the ring bell. Now he's got the ring bell. He's beating him with the ring bell. It's completely legal in this match type. Nonetheless, as we were saying a few weeks ago, Sindrak took on you and, and the victory. I mean, I don't want to call it, you know, unorthodox, but it certainly wasn't a typical victory. But nonetheless, Sindrak really has yet to face anyone. Now he's choking Gavari, and look at the choke. He has yet to really face anyone of an equatable caliber, and Gavarian is certainly that guy. As Sindrak now with Gavarian on the barricade, look out! And they go bulldozing through the barricade. Let's take another look at that one. As you just see, Sindrak bulldozes Gavarian through the steel barricade that's designed to keep people in, not out. Almost like an uh, animal-like mentality. I'm not used to seeing Gavarian like this. You're right about that. And look out, Sindrak's getting some weapons out of the ring now. I really do not know why they keep those under there. Um, you know, it's like the, the junk drawer in your closet. But they just build a ring around it instead of a shelf. Yeah. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Marie has an awful lot of junk as the trash can and two chairs have now been thrown in the ring, and Sindrak's still going back for more. That's a table! He's got a table, Con! We know all about the CWE and tables. But, uh, now we do, but uh, Gavarin has just picked up that ring bell, and it looks like Sindrak is too big. Oh, he clobbered him over the head! Good call! Good call, Connor as Gavari now with the ring bell clobbering Sindrak over the head, and again off the back of the skull. But Sinrak, look at that, he didn't even phase him. He's up, he's rubbing his hands. Gavarian, Hurricane can run into that table that Sindrak introduced to the match. Now we're starting to see some life out of Gavarian, but Sindrak with the table. And there it goes, as the table driven hard into the ribs of Gavarian. That can break them easily. Well, I mean, you could definitely uh, already tell that Gavarian has been beaten as far as just within a short amount of time. Uh, oh, good job avoiding the ring bell there. Watch out, by the throat. Two-handed spine buster onto that ring bell. I mean, he's taking a lot of punishment in such a short amount of time, and he can definitely show it. He doesn't, he's not a slow self -run. Right about that. Gavarian, ladies and gentlemen, not only physically, as he's dropped down on those chairs, not only physically, but mentally can't be in his complete normal head as the ring bell's thrown at him now. Gavarian is the guy throughout history who has typically dominated people physically, just literally has been able to bulldoze over anyone who's gotten in his way. There's a huge clothesline, that signature clothesline from Sindrak. He's literally able to bulldoze over anybody's way, but right now Sindrak is more than a match for Gavarian as we gotta watch out here. Sindrak puts Gavarian on the table. Whoa! Through the table with a spear! A spear just put Gavarian through the table like driving a hammer into a nail. Gavarian might be broken in half. And now I think he's bleeding. I think Sindrak might have used that chair for a lethal efficiency. Watch out the ankle! Oh, he missed the chair. Gavarian lucked out, but not that time! Gavarian's ankle was in the chair when Sindrak drove that steel frame into the bone. He must have been uh, wearing, uh, wearing Chase Adams' uh, break all the ankles t-shirt there. Which you can still not buy, ladies and gentlemen, but hopefully one day we will market that t-shirt, as we know some of you out there are very fond of it. Especially Connor. Now look at this Gavarian, though. He's got him. That, what is that? That is a that is an incredibly unorthodox submission hold, but it looks like it's causing some serious pain to the shoulder of Sindrak. I mean, take it any way you can get it. Uh, most definitely. I'm surprised he's even on the ball on his feet right now. But Sindrak, the power and a scoop slam. I mean, Nicely done. A couple seconds ago, he was laying on the mat bleeding. Uh... Now he's standing strong as we... Oh, spine buster onto that chair. Maybe not as strong as we thought. Sindrak has made sure Gavarian has filled every ounce of these weapons that he's introduced, throwing them. He's just throwing them at Gavarian now. He's not even using them in an orthodox fashion. He's just throwing them. He's got the trash can. He's going to throw it at him off the knees. And look at the trash can. It landed upright. That is going to suck if anybody goes into that. Watch out. Spy must have known he was able to get out of the way. 
I am just waiting for something to happen with these weapons that have been placed around the ring. Tony got a smirk on your face. What's, what's so funny? No, no, I'm... And nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, Sinrath now throwing Gavorian into the corner. He's got the trash can once again. Sindrak placing it down now. He's got to be careful. As Sindrak and Gavarian now tie up in the corner. Again, throwing that trash can car. He's continuing to use these weapons in such an unorthodox fashion. I've never seen anything like this before. Well, I mean, use them however you see fit, but I mean, he's definitely using them uh, a factor into his advantage. I will not deny that point, as now they've spilled back to the outside. This is an incredible match for one of our weekly shows, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to remind you, we're bringing this match to you completely free, 100%. No paper to required. This is CWE Live. This is the free action that you get when you tune into CWE every Saturday at some arbitrary time on that day. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Sindrak putting Gavarian in the corner here. This could be bad. Sindrak might be signaling something here, putting the ropes around. Look out, he's going to go for a top rope DDT and it hits home. Sindrak using those turnbuckles to his advantage. He's using the whole ring like a weapon, and that is what's really given him the edge. Gavorian has not been able to come back for maybe five or six minutes now. Oh, yeah, I saw him five or six minutes, and I mean, it just blows me away because, I mean, this is one of the people I fought in the prison cage match. And watch out, watch out. Oh, huge elbow, springboard. We spoke too soon and we eat our words, ladies and gentlemen. Gavarian, the poison! He spits the poison, here it comes, he's going for the... Oh no, Sindrak reversed it! A rake to the eye, look out! He's got him up! And the Demon Horns connects hard! Sindrak, but he's not going for the cover! What is this? He's signaling the end here with that cutthroat gesture that usually signifies the Demon Horns, but he already hit it! What could he possibly have left here for Gavarian? He's putting him on the top rope. Connor, have you ever seen this before? Wait a minute. Don't tell me. Don't tell me from the top rope, the demon horns. The demon horns from the top rope. And the cover. One, two. Sinrak got him. Wow. wow. Here's your winner, Sinrak. I, I have never seen a move as devastating as those demon horns. And he just hit it from the top rope. Gavarian could have broken bones all throughout his upper body. Gavarian, he was literally manhandled by Sinrak. And ladies and gentlemen, I have never seen that. What is this going to mean for the future of CWE? And what is this going to mean from the roster? We'll find out when we come back. You know, folks, they say that it is unkind to wag your finger in the face of your rival in his time of despair. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, that's Sean Peterson. They say that it is dishonorable to portray the image of the victor while standing before the fallen. For those of you less educated types, and since we are in Wheeling, West Virginia, I'm going to assume that's all of you. What I just said was a fancy way of saying, I told you so. Yes, go ahead. Shower me with booze. Go ahead. Because all of the noise in the world doesn't change the fact that last week, I stood in this ring, and I told you that I was going to become CWE Champion. And lo and behold, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. Because Sid Floyd, in all of his honor, couldn't defeat me. He just wouldn't stay up. Sid Floyd was beaten to the point where he could not answer a 10 count and thus he forfeited to me the CWE Championship. Something which he said he was too proud to do. 
But it gets better, ladies and gentlemen, because like the sore loser that Sid Floyd is, he came out at the top of the hour to announce that somehow, somewhere, I was responsible for whoever it was that turned off the lights and beat him into death. But ladies and gentlemen, folks, the bottom line is I had nothing to do with it. I know what you're thinking, of course, of course I've got the money. Of course, I'm the kind of guy who would do that. Of course I am. You think I don't know who I am? But as it stands, ladies and gentlemen, I have nothing to do with it. I don't even know who they are. How could I hire someone if I don't even know who they are, ladies and gentlemen? It doesn't make any sense. So the last thing I have to say to you pathetic, really West Virginians, is that I hope you get used to this site because I'm going to be the senior champion for a long, long time. Hey, now, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't mean to interrupt you, Sean. I mean, after all, this is your night of celebration, but you forgot something. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you remember this, but two weeks ago, Sid Floyd destroyed my car with a monster truck. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to announce that I went to great lengths, great expense, to give myself a one-on-one -on -one match with Sid Floyd next week. Now, Sean, you're really going to like this. Because right, I want you to think about this. If I'm able to defeat Sid Floyd next week, then I have been promised a number one contendership for the CWE World's Championship against wow. Giganta at Uncensored. The world's title. Think of it, folks. Sean Peterson, the CWE Champion. Chase Adams, the World Champion. Strictly business on top of the world. I like the sound of that. So with that being said, folks, it's time to get to business. It's time we got to what we actually came out here to do, and ladies and gentlemen, that is to announce who my number one contender is going to be. I'm an honorable champion. Hey, Sean! What, you look like you done gone see the ghost there, boy? You didn't think I'd run off into the path into Darwin's forever now, did you, boy? That's right, it's your old poppy. I'm back here, and guess what? For those of y'all who don't know, Daniel Dorsey was unfortunately released on bad terms a couple of nights ago, but you didn't think that the powers of be wouldn't bring in someone new, did you? That's right, Sean, I'm your new boss! Now before you go all hooting and hollering all over about number one contender, I thought I'd come out here and tell you myself that we got plans. We got things the way we want them to be. And tonight, as my first act, as new general manager, I'm here to introduce to you, Sean, your new number one contender. It's a man you know very well. It's a man you faced on multiple occasions. And it's a man that you will defend that CWE title against at Uncensored in just a few weeks. It is a man, as the audience, the commentary, and some of the fans will say, has been there and done that with everything. But the one thing he hasn't done yet, Sean, is he hasn't beaten you for the CWE Championship. And I'm done giving that opportunity because at CW Uncensored, it's gonna be Sean Peterson defending the CWA Championship one-on-one -on -one against Corey Fox. Corey Fox! Since you felt the liberty to take out his best friend, I figured since he can't defend it himself, the next best guy would be his best friend, Sean. You will defend against Corey Fox. Corey Fox versus Sean Peterson. Where the hell did you come from, Dad? And furthermore, 
Where the hell do you get off thinking you get to tell the CWE champion what to do? Maybe you've been gone for a little while, but since you've been gone, I've become the man. I've become the one who calls the shots around here. And quite frankly, Corey Fox, I don't think so. I'll pick my own number one contender. I don't care what position you call yourself, you don't get a say, Dad. Well, I'm glad you got some big words, because tonight, you're going to have to defend them against the Gags' family. Well, a big announcement right there. Corey Fox will take on Sean Peterson at Uncensored, but tonight, Strictly Business will face the Gans' family, and we'll see that when we come back. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, as J.C. Holm and Chris Twenier, a former World Crown Champion, making his way down the ring. And now it looks like he's got a lot to say. It looks like a night full of people trying to get things off their mind, eh, Cole? Well, nonetheless, I can't imagine this is going to be anything we really want to hear, but it doesn't look like we have a choice. Let's take a listen to J.C. Hall. It would be incredibly easy for me to come out here and say all sorts of ridiculous things, like Jack Van Ryan cheated, or that J.C. Hall deserves a rematch for Reason X. But since Sunday, I've had the opportunity to do quite a lot of thinking, and folks, it's time that I not only get serious with you, it's time that I got serious with myself. Because, in the end of the day, that was the only reason that I lost my World Crown Championship to Jack Van Ryan. I was not serious with myself. I thought in my mind that I was smart enough to outdo him, and it turns out I wasn't. I thought in my mind that I was smart enough to keep him away from that match, but I wasn't. And as it turns out, because I spent so much time thinking of ways to keep him out of the match, I didn't spend enough time preparing for the match. And despite the fact that Chris over here tried to help, and for the record, I'd like to say that yes, we had our differences leading up to the event. But don't think for a second that him and I are not on the same page, because we are. We had some differences, but we sat down in the back and we sorted them out. Chris did try to help, but the fact remained that Jack Van Ryan overcame that and was able to defeat me. And I'd like to be the first one to congratulate him. That's right. But I don't want you to think I've come out here to apologize to all of you because as far as I'm concerned, all of you can still kiss my ass. I don't need the help of any single one of you, and I didn't come out here to ask for your approval. GC Home came out here for one purpose tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and that wasn't to appease you. It was to, how do you say, live up to myself in spite of you. Because from this moment on, you are going to see a J.C. Hall that is 100% business, a J.C. Hall that is 100% action, and a J.C. Hall, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be prepared for anything that comes my way. Well, some big words from Hall, still against the fans, but says he's going to get serious with himself. We'll see how long that can hold up, Connor, over the next coming weeks. And there's Jack Van Ryan, the man who beat him. We know he had to be listening to that, and we'll see if that plays into anything when we come back. And we are back in Wheeling, West Virginia for CWE action. We are going to see a great tag match coming up next. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, at a combined weight of 526 pounds, Chase Adams, and the CWE champion, Sean Peterson. And Connor, I know you still get a bitter taste of business. Connor, I know that announcer guy likes to cut me off. I know you still get a bitter taste in your mouth every time you have to hear Sean Peterson is the CWE champion, but tonight, the, the singles title doesn't matter. Tonight is tag team action against a team that's starting to find their own in the Gansas family. Tonight, 
right, ladies and gentlemen, as they make their way to the ring, the Gansas family looks to improve their not so great starting off record as a tag team. And introducing their opponents. And finally, the 551 pounds, Scott and Braden, the Gansas family. Well, here comes Scott and Braden, ladies and gentlemen, as we take a look at Sean Peterson's face and look at the combination as their opponents make their way down to the ring. Scott and Braden, of course, Scott, a legendary, potentially Hall of Fame superstar one day, maybe. Former world champion multiple times. Braden Gans is the second generation, the first sustaining second generation superstar in CWE history. Braden Gansis was a member of the Road to Glory ladder match and was not able to succeed in that, but he has done a little bit of work on his singles career so far, but now it's time to team up with Dad and see if they can't knock off Strictly Business. As we get set, Braden Gansis is starting against Peterson and he throws him right into the corner. Look out now, he's going to position him on the top. Chase Adams wants nothing to do with that. As he's up top, what's going to happen here? Big Hurricane Rana from the top rope, Con. That was nice. Now, Sean Peterson tied up again by Ch er, uh, by Braden Gansis. But a nice reversal and a shot. What a right hand from the veteran. Sean Peterson flexing his muscles after that one. He goes off the ropes. Chase Adams again wants nothing to do with it. As a big neck breaker takes out Braden Gansis. Now, Sean Peterson, we got to cover one. And a kick out there. Now, Sean Peterson, obviously, way more experienced than Braden Gansis. But, of course, this is his first CWE Championship reign in history. Do you think he might let that get to his head a little bit? Um... Well, I think Sean Peterson lets Sean Peterson get to his head. That's a very valid point. So, uh, but, um, he's had a lot of experience uh, using Chase Adams to uh, help him win matches around so literally what this match is about. So they definitely have chemistry, so... Now, do you really think that Sean Peterson's actually using Chase Adams? Or do you think Chase Adams is there under his own look? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, definitely uh, Chase Adams is definitely a smart enough individual to realize, you know, when he, if or when he's being used. But it's definitely, Sean Peterson has money and he definitely knows how to control people around him. Now, I, I don't know if you caught this, ladies and gentlemen, but while Braden Gansas is still the legal man, Sean Peterson attacked that leg maybe six or seven times, and we'll see now, as Braden Gansas paces around the ring, that he is walking with a severe limp. So keep your eyes on Braden Gansas. He's having trouble getting around. As Sean Peterson now takes him off the apron with a big elbow and goes right back for Dad into the barricade. And that was one of the things that uh, Sean Peterson brought to the table against the uh, Sid Ford last week was that limb targeting system with the... Uh, I think it was a sledgehammer, the chair, the ring bell, even the steps We got, got Money Pit! He nails the Money Pit. I didn't mean to cut you off, but we had a high impact move, and we got a cover here. One, no, not even one. Scott Gans is fresh enough to kick out. But uh, I think maybe even the steps got thrown in there, and uh, he's definitely using what he was able to do in the match and then bring this one. Well, Chase Adams has just been tagged, and watch out right to the back with Chase Adams' knees. A nice double-team maneuver and a bulldog there as Strictly Business continues to demonstrate that amazing chemistry that they have. But look at this. Scott Gaines is up. Scott Gaines is a shot to the head, followed by another shot. He's going to send him off the ropes, I think. No, reversal. Chase Adams reverses, comes back here. Ducks down. Oh, but a knee buster to the face. Scott Gansas continues to show that veteranship. You saw Chase Adams try to go for that over the top shoulder, over the shoulder back toss, and Scott Gansas hurls him over the ropes there. That's some power. Scott Gansas is certainly one of the more powerful superstars on the roster, as now he's going to throw him across into that steel barricade. Watch for Scott Gansas to take advantage of the outside, but keep in mind the ref is counting, and that's two right there, so they're going to have to keep their minds on the referee and his count. Now look at that thrown into the barricade. Here's Sean Peterson getting himself involved. Now look at this into the barrier, or rather the ring post. I'm sorry, the ring post. Now the house of, of Scott Gansas' his face is Chase Adams. Oh, off the post. Throws him back into the ring, and they get in. But Chase Adams still is not quite in the ring yet. Springboard and a sacrifice headbutt. A springboard headbutt from Chase Adams. And it looks like they're going up. Gansas has got through. It looks like uh, there's a tag. Adams got the worst of all, but... Sometimes that's the, that's why they call it suicide moves, but look out! Kick out DDT, and Braden Gansas eats the canvas. I was going like to uh, say that, uh... Watch out! Springboard! And he clobbered Braden Gansas right in the back, but again, he might have taken the worst of them. When Sean Peterson helped out uh, Adams on the outside, that was probably the first time I've seen uh, Peterson help Adams out, not the other way around. You are right about that, ladies and gentlemen, as the Gansas family is suffering a downpour here of... Look at this, Chase Adams 
What's he got in mind for Braden Gaines as the young Braden Gaines is through the barricade? Those barricades are taking a beating tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as Braden Gaines is just put through the barricade by Chase Adams. Very impact-driven move there. Chase Adams is no, I mean, no stranger to violence. The ref is still counting, I want to mind you, ladies and gentlemen. Now look at this. This is turned out to a ball. Chase Adams just takes out Scott Gaines, and I think that might have busted him open. I think those knees to the face as Chase Adams is in the ring. Chase Adams is the legal man. Look at Peterson. Peterson is keeping Braden Gaines is outside the ring as the ref is counting. Look at this tactic. I think that was nine right there. Is Braden Gaines is going to be able to get back in the ring? Ten. No, it's over. A count out victory and the Gaines' family has fallen to strictly business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners. This is the count out. Chase Adams and the CWE champion Sean Peterson strictly business. And they get to go back celebrating a win that I wouldn't quite call character, but nonetheless, a win is a win. And now look at this, Chase Adams has a chair. Chase Adams has a chair, wait, there's Brayden. Brayden jumps in and he stops Adams from doing what he was gonna do. Way to go, kid. Now Brayden Gaines, wait a minute. Brayden Gaines, he just hit his dad with the chair. What the hell? And now, wait a minute. Oh, not this. Family Tree DDT. What the hell is going through Braden Gaines' mind? What is he thinking? Well, I think it's safe to say that that uh, tag team is definitely going to work for now. Braden Gaines took out his own father with a chair. And then the Family Tree DDT. Now look at him. He's just going to leave. He's going to walk out on his father and everything that his father built to get him to where he is now. That's disgusting. Uh, I wonder if perhaps something happened off camera backstage and we, have, we didn't see. I don't know. Oh, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we might have just seen the bad side of Braden Gansas, a side we didn't even know existed. Braden Gansas took out his own father with a chair just moments ago, and we'll have to talk about that a little bit more, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back. Did you know there are a lot of people in the park? who don't really like what the moment is telling. There are a lot of people in the park who think that Richard Till and the major behind me are nothing but a bunch of two men backstage street rats. But you know, that just, this is not true. I have been working a long time to become who I am. There are a lot of people in the back who don't believe that Richard Till deserves to be tag team champion with Dimitri Volchenko. But I got news for them. But every time you try to tell me that I ain't good enough to be here, every time you try to tell me that I'm not good enough, I'll remind you that we've beaten every single tag team that CWA has thrown our way, and we are through. We've got a lot more coming and we know it. Every single tag team that has come our way, we have made sure, absolutely sure, that the movement has put them in their place. So all those people in the back who think they can come up and challenge a movement, we're gonna put you in your place, just like everyone else. Because no one in the back has what it takes to take on the movement. No one in the world has what it takes to take on the movement. There isn't a soul in the entire... Wait a minute! It's Dylan Protein's music! Dylan Protein is back! We haven't seen him since Road to Glory when you got to put him on injured reserve with elbow surgery. And Dylan Protein is back here in Wheeling, West Virginia. This is incredible. Oh, uh, we've got a mic in his hands, so he's definitely got something to say. I am so happy to see the return of Dylan Protein, but it doesn't look like the movement is. We'll have to see how this plays out. Well, look what we've got here. After all this time, Gigantus and the Playtor came back to CWE. What do you think, eh? You find this amusing, Dimitri? Because I do. 
Let me ask the pro team, what do you think, Dylan? What do you think, Dylan, that you got any business out here doing? You one of those people in the back that thinks that you can take on the movement? I got bad news. There might be two of us, but we'll break you, just like Giganta did one. You hear me, boy? Till I only came back for one reason, and that was to wipe that little smirk off of your face. Me and my friends in the back, we've been watching the movement. We've been watching what you've been doing to the people that are in that locker room. We've been watching what you've been saying to these fans. We ain't proud of it. We don't like the fact that you have to represent our roster. So what I came out here to do, Till, is I came out here to tell you myself that there's going to be some changes in this tag division starting with me. I know I'm normally a singles guy. I know I normally make my own way, but quite frankly, you right now are hindering the tag team roster because you are not giving these people a shot to come up. You are taking them out from behind, and that is what a coward would do. But like any coward, it doesn't take much to put them down, and so I am out here tonight to tell you I will be the man to put you down. Because you see, Tail, I'm going to go find myself a tag team partner. It might be someone in the back, it might not. I might search the streets of Wheeling, West Virginia to find Which myself a tag work. team partner. But I show you, before very long, Till, my partner, whoever it may be, and I are going to come here and we are going to put you down. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do it in uncensored. The old-fashioned way. Now look out, we've got a standoff here between the movement and Dylan Pochi. And we're not done. Roy, what do you make of this? What do you make of this? I'll tell you what I make of it. Why don't you just walk on home, boy? Go back to locker room before you get hurt. You call that intimidating? You think that's going to scare me, Volchenko? I'll tell you what's going to scare me. That face is yours. Oh, Bogey with a punch to the face! But the movement! The numbers game! The movement! Able to outman Dylan Bogey who says he's going to find a partner and take those bouts from them. How is this going to unfold over the next couple of weeks? Really 
deflection. He goes and tries to take on. Jason Hall with this turn. Of course, he'll have the help of this man. And his tag team partner from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 217 pounds, Sid Kudo. Well, it still looks really weird to see Sid Floyd walking around without the CWE title. As we all know, a strange set of circumstances underwent at the pay-per-view event in World War last Sunday. And Sid Floyd was, well, he said it himself. During the, that power outage of sorts that we had, he was attacked by two individuals. He says he wasn't able to identify who they were, but he thinks he has it in his mind who is behind it now. My first guess would obviously be Sean Actually, you do I have no idea. And you do want to call to mind that, that Chase Adams was out cold backstage. That, that could have been anything, though. It doesn't mean it was necessarily equated with the people who did whatever they did. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, that's neither here nor there right now. As we have a match, J.C. Holm and Chris Trenninger will take on Ryan Cooper and Sid Floyd in tonight's main event. What is sure to be a good one. I'm surprised Floyd's even in this match. I'm surprised uh, that Ryan Cooper's in this match, quite frankly, as we mentioned earlier. Not too, but uh, coming from what Floyd just dealt with, uh, really we got much. a submission here. We'll get back to that in one second, but we got a submission, but Holm is able to get out of it. Nice work. Uh, Floyd pretty much getting, uh, what I define as getting stabbed in the back in some freak power outage that I, I remember causing that uh, Peterson caused, mm -hmm. and then losing his title. I wouldn't think he would have the mindset to be any different in the match right now. I mean, I think he would be concentrated on other things. So Sid Floyd is a man of really good composure. Sid Floyd is a man of pride and principle, and he will do what is asked of him if he is asked to do something that is what he considers to be worth the time. Sid Floyd, I'm sure, you know, Ryan Cooper's a really good friend of his, and tonight, oh, look out, but he got out of the way. Ryan Cooper may have asked for help in this match. Maybe perhaps Ryan Cooper was thinking that J.C. Holm and Chris Twinner might be a bit of a challenge, and he thought Sid Floyd could help him out. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, Cooper throws J.C. Holm back in the ring as we see Ryan Cooper now. There's the tag made to Sid Floyd, so Holm and Floyd are going to go out of here for a little bit. Oh, drop kick, but Holm took the better of that. And look out! Right off the bat! Lethal injection! The signature move of J.C. Holm's Twinner took out Ryan Cooper to cover one! And a kick out at one by Sid Floyd. That's impressive. Not many people kick out of that move at all, let alone at one. As now Sid Floyd seems to turn the tables a little bit. Sid Floyd com coming back. Look out. Elbow up. Stop down on the elbow. We saw him do that move to Sean Peterson a number of times at New World War. Oh, that, is, that is becoming one of his favorite maneuvers to do to people. As now it looks like he's going to send him back into the friendly corner. Sid Floyd. And a tag as Ryan Cooper is back in. Sid Floyd making a brief appearance in this match. But look out. Oh, the next snap. The next snap and a springboard elbow. Great double team effort by Ryan Cooper and Sid Floyd. Um... I'm surprised by Ryan Cooper. I mean, one coming off that, I don't even know what that was, how he's still walking from uh, last week, but uh, he's shown a lot of, I want to say he seems like he's grown up a lot from uh, when he uh, traded in his contract in that bed with uh, Sean Peterson a right. while back. He might have been humbled by the sheer force that was Giganta, or maybe just the fact that Sid Floyd's in his corner might be calming him down. I mean, let's not forget about Ryan Cooper's history. He's a really solid tag team competitor, as Chris Twentier has been tagged in. Now, Sid Twentier will take on Sid Floyd here. There's an atomic drop and a big boot to the face. Great teamwork by Holm and Twentier. Now, as I was saying, recover and a kick out of two. Now, as I was saying, Ryan Cooper is a historic tag team competitor. Let's not forget, he was one of three men that originally founded the faction Casino Royale, uh, stemming from the fact that all three of their competitors were from Las Vegas. Ryan Cooper is a three, at least a three-time tag team champion, and he has made his name helping out with other people. Let's not forget, a couple of weeks ago, he's also got a, a pinfall victory over Strictly Business with Sid Floyd. So Ryan Cooper has the experience in the tag department, and maybe that's why he's looking so good. Although right now he's not looking so good as Chris Twentier is taking the advantage here. Throwing him over the top and watch out. Look for a big suplex into the ring. Chris Twentier, a, a surprisingly strong guy given his appearance. You wouldn't maybe peg him as one of the strongest dudes, but Chris Twentier can pack a punch as we saw a couple weeks ago and as we're seeing right now. Uh, that's one of, I mean, this entire, this entire company is the whole roster. So Look at this. Cool that, uh, Look at this. He's got a modified submission hole locked in. Oh, but Sid Floyd wisely broke it up with a good partner. This whole roster is just filled with uh, superstars that uh, surprised the hell out of me. They, they are a full surprise, ladies and gentlemen, here as 
I mean, we didn't even know Chris Tonier was a competitor, let alone a good one, when we first saw him a couple weeks ago. And now look at this. Double team effort as they hit the double elbows. J.C. Holm and Ryan Cooper now are going strong. Holm's going up top here. Look at J.C. Holm. He's going for a leg drop and he hits Holm. What a leg drop did not connect. I thought he hit it at first. My eyes deceived me as Ryan Cooper got the better of that, fortunately for Cooper. Oh, but look out, Cooper. Cooper might be looking to go all in. Cooper, he's got Holm right where he went. Ryan Cooper, your time is over. Wait a minute. There was a flash of light. I think somebody just came over the barricade, Connor. This is really reminiscent of what we saw just a few nights ago with New World War. Wait, this time they're calling out Cooper. Oh, wait, not another flash of light. I think there was guys in the ring. There are, I definitely think there was somebody in the ring. And, uh, I think those two individuals might be back. They took out Sid Floyd. Only this time they're going after Ryan Cooper. Awfully suspicious, isn't it? Let's not forget about Chase Adams and Ryan Cooper and their history. Oh, uh, another flash of light. There was definitely guys in the ring. I saw people that time. There was absolutely two individuals in the ring taking out Ryan Cooper that time. Well, then we need to get somebody in there. And, uh, somebody needs to come down. There's another flash. And look at that. There was, that was a shot to the face. I saw a kick to the face. Those two individuals just came in and interfered with Ryan Cooper as their music's faded. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's, we got the lights back. And J.C. Hump. Wait a minute. J.C. Hump's going up top. Going to take advantage. J.C. Hump. Stamp of approval. The stamp of approval connects the cover. One. Two, he got him. Well, perhaps those plays we saw from J.C. Hall earlier were serious. He's gotten serious. They think up the win over Ryan Cooper and Sid Floyd. J.C. Hall has won it. But nonetheless, for the second time, those individuals have attacked the superstar, and this time it was Ryan Cooper. If they're not solely targeting Sid Floyd, who could be next? And does it really mean that Sean Peterson might be behind it? How are these events going to unfold? Next week here on CWE Live.